Our next speaker is uh, Gerald Oliveto, is a project engineer overseeing New Jersey's Department of Transportation's Movable Bridge Engineering Group. This is going to be a, a topic on our um, navigation lighting backup system that we recently developed in New Jersey. In New Jersey, we, our, our bridges are divided with state, county, turnpike, uh, they're all separate ownership. New Jersey owns 41 fixed span structures with both fender systems and navigation lights. We have seven fixed span structures with fender systems and no navigation lights, 15 operational drawbridges with fender systems and navigation lights, two drawbridges that have been welded shut, but they still have fender systems and navigation lights. So that brings a total of 65 bridges spanning navigable waterways within the state under New Jersey DOT control. A lot of other states only get to deal with one Coast Guard district. We get to deal with two. The fifth district covers from central New Jersey and south and then 1st District covers North Jersey and, um, and North. Uh, so I have 24 bridges in the 1st District out of the New York office and 45 bridges that are controlled by the 5th District out of the Portsmouth, Virginia office. District is uh, Hal Pitts, for those that know him, and 1st District is Chris Bisignano out of New York. Title 33 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Section 118, governs lights on bridges spanning navigable waterways constructed after March 23rd, 1906. So most of us fall into that category. And there's a provision that says each margin of a navigable channel will be marked by a red light. But typically when you're going through the bridge, you have six red lights on the bridge, one on each fender on the approaches, one center span, and one at the other approach. Can't really see them in the daylight, but there's, there's usually one right here on the approach, one in the center, and then one on the other approach on both fenders under the bridge. And the CFR also states that the center and navigable channel under each span will be marked by a range of two green lights. So your overhead clearance lights, uh, typically one mounted to each outside fascia beam, and they're mounted just below the outermost edge of the bridge span. And they're visible for 360 degrees for boats going through the bridge. You can see them coming into it and as you're going through. So on this system, it would be right up here. It's just the Coast Guard regulations on their bridge guide on, on lighting for navigable bridges. Clearly states that you have to have the red lights coming in and the green on top. On a certain high span bridges that we have, they meet this criteria where it's red, red, green, all mounted to the beams. So just your typical navigation lighting, your reds coming into the bridge and under the bridge and then your green on top. Same thing, this is one of our brand new fender systems. Red lights, red lights, red lights, and then your green up top can't really see them much during the day, but these are solar powered and they're on 24 seven. The lighting regulations in the CFR say that lights shall be displayed from sunset to sunrise and at all other times when visibility is less than one mile. Some of the lighting systems are dawn to dusk. Some of them are 24 seven. They're all supposed to be on during the, during the night. Title 33 of the CFR, section 533 governs penalties for violations. There's a civil penalty of 25,000 for each instance of an inoperable navigation light. That has since gone up. I just can't find the, the uh, citation for it, but the last letter that we got was 29,192, which is kind of a weird number, but that's what the, the rates are going at now. And it's a separate offense for each day a violation continues. So you can see in this picture, this was a work order that went to our electrical crew. The, the overhead lights out, the fender lights out, the bridge is completely dark. So any boat coming into it doesn't know that there's a bridge there. But the way we handle things is upon notification of a malfunctioning light, an emergency uh, work order is issued to our electrical crew, and the electrical crews have to go out and repair things the same day. The work order gets closed out, the Coast Guard gets notified, and everybody's happy. In the event of an unrepairable light, the Coast Guard's notified, and our crews go out and they put solar lights until a permanent fix can be implemented. So you can see on this one, I believe we have a, a fender light out. Just simple things, the Coast Guard likes to ride through, and when they find a light out, they send us the letter, and then they tell us we gotta fix it same day. It's also noticed by our engineering staff, it's noticed by our stru structural evaluation department, so there's, there's many avenues that we get notified of lights being out. Some of the challenges to repair these lights, we're separated into three regions, our electrical crews. We have a north, a central, and a south. Each of them only has one boat. So when you get the call at two o'clock on a Friday in the middle of December and the crew has to go back, get the boat, they've got to mobilize, retrieve the boat, launch, perform their repairs, demobilize. It's a pain, it wears on the guys, especially in the winter when these things seem to pop up. There's also inclement weather conditions, rain, snow, wind, marine advisories, seasonal conditions, ice in the waterways, icy fender systems, early nightfall in the winter, shore traffic in the summer, and there's overtime costs associated with it too. This was uh, in early 2018, a completely frozen Cape May Canal, which nobody should be driving a boat through anyway. There's a small section of the CFR 118-100 that allows for installation of retroreflective panels with approval from the Coast Guard District Commander. It states that you can better identify your bridge piers 
and channels can serve as a backup for your red channel margin lights, and it would also be an increased visibility of the fender system and the channel. We've been using these corrugated delineators on our highway application since 2013. We haven't had an issue, they've been crash tested, and you can see this is a fresh installation on Route 133 in New Jersey. We got yellows down the left side, whites down the right. Really makes the bridge pop, um, they stand out at night, that they've really been, they've been great. Um, they're available commercially in yellow, white, orange, and red. And they're available in one and a half, four, six inch heights, and they're all 34 inches long. So you can see all the colors they're available in. We kind of saw that there was the red available and put two and two together with the CFR, and we went out to a bridge down in Cape May. This is one of our brand new fender systems, which if you haven't seen the poster downstairs, I, I encourage you to take a look with uh, our new fender systems in Cape May. We went with, armed with a roll of duct tape and some rubbing alcohol, and we climbed down to this fender system and we put a temporary installation of these panels underneath each navigation light. So we put one panel beneath each light, submitted it to the Coast Guard, overwhelming support. First district and fifth district both came back and said that these panels would be an acceptable backup system for the navigation lights. So once we got the approvals, we went right out and we started uh, in permanent installations. And there it is, there's your poster child for the backup system for the navigation lights. So we mounted one underneath each, each navigation light and you could see how it really pops. I think they stand out even more than the navigation lights themselves, especially during the day. And these panels cost roughly $15 each. And the hardware that goes with them, a couple dollars. Stainless steel screws on timber fenders, concrete anchors on concrete, or composite work well. The concrete anchors are like 35 cents. It costs like nothing to install them. So once there's a panel in place, the navigation light has its redundancy. It eliminates the Coast Guard civil penalty for the uh, malfunctioning navigation light. It eliminates the overtime cost for our DOT crews because now all repairs can be performed during safe daylight conditions on the next business day. Before and afters. It's the same fender right there, before and after, with, with the panel and without it. So like I said, I think they stand out even better during the day. Another one before and after, it's kind of hard to see, but they're mounted here and here. And then just some other installs that we've done. You can see them here. And then this is one of our new fender systems that they're in on. You can see them underneath each navigation light. And then like I said, that this is during a daytime application. You can see the lights on and the red panel. So when you hit them the right way, they really pop. And just some more pictures. You can see them underneath, I believe the have lights here. We began our installations immediately after we got approval from the Coast Guard in July. 19 of 65 bridges are completed so far, with an anticipated goal of the end of the year for a complete installation of all 65. Just in summary, delineation of the navigable channel in all weather conditions with these panels uh, provides safety features for the marine community. It's a significant cost savings for both the department and taxpayers. Creates a safe working condition for the electrical crews. They're inexpensive, low maintenance solution, and we've had overwhelming support from the boating community. Everybody's been driving through as we're putting them on, cheering and clapping, and <laughs> they're a very friendly bunch, the boating community. Night to see the effectiveness of this? The boats reflect? should have running lights going through it, so yeah. They, so they, that light would reflect off it? Yes, yeah, so okay. just like a highway application. Right, well I know with cars you have headlights, so they really pop back at you, so I wasn't yeah, sure. Yeah, but when you're coming into it on a, on a dark waterway with their lights on, it, it, it works. It, okay, good. Yeah. Right. Without the reflectors, you had 24 hours to repair it. Is there a, a maximum you can go with just a reflector now? As long as it's in place, it, it doesn't matter. But the, the provision was with the Coast Guard that we still have to maintain the lights and that if there's any kind of lighting plan upgrade, so if we, have, if we upgraded a, a bridge to solar, they want a new lighting plan that reflects the, the reflectors as well. So it, it was a simple request from the Coast Guard, very reasonable. <laughs> The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.